get them maybe several months later. And that's one of the reasons that squirrels bury their acorns, is to help to leach out some of that tannic acid. Uh, ways you can do it in modern methods, you can boil them, pour the water off. Boil them, pour the water off. As you do this, it, or as you're leaching them in a stream, they're going to change from a yellowish color to a dark brown, almost a black color as you can see in here. When they turn to that dark, darker brown color, they are edible. All that tannic acid will be gone, there will be no bitter flavors left at all. It will be absolutely wonderful at this point. And you can dry them and eat them as a nut, just like that. Or you can pound them up and make them into flour. They make fantastic pancakes. Oh, and the other way, another way I've done it, a modern way, uh, you can actually put them in a coffee maker and just have your coffee maker run hot water over them continuously. This way How you don't... Long? What? How long would you do this water treatment? It depends on the species. Sometimes I've, I've had it done in 10 minutes, but it could take hours oh, for other species. You can taste the difference. You can taste it, and you can see the difference. Use that till it turns it's going to be really dark. obvious until it turns dark brown. Yeah. Yeah. But as you can see, for the hunter gatherers here in Texas, this is going to be your only major plant food from December to January. So this would be it. And there's, uh, I don't know if you've ever gone to a parking lot at that time of year. The ground is just covered in acorns. You can sweep them up, put them in buckets. People around here, for some reason, don't eat them. I guess they don't know how to process them. Don't know how good they really are. So did you say you once the once I'm kind of going a little fast for me, but that's okay. Once you put it in the water overnight, then the top comes off. No, the, the oh, shells are not going to come off. You're going to need to crush them. If you can dry so them, it's going to make it easier. So when you said crush, you meant just the shell. Yeah. But it'll when you, you're going to crush the entire nut. Because it's, if you try to crack, crack each nut like a pecan to get out the whole nut in a whole piece, it's going to take too much effort. Especially if they're wet at all. If they still have a little bit of green on them, they're kind of leathery shells, so they're going to be very difficult to crack over. So what I've done before is I just like put them in a bucket and get a big pounder and just pound them up, shell and all. And then you want to separate the shell from the kernel. And the way that I've done that is through putting it in water, agitating the water. And okay. the, the shells are lighter, and they're going to float to the top. Mm -hmm. And I've used that same method for separating seeds from different holes. Even you can do it with grass seed. Or with grass seed, you can toss them up in the air, just winnow them, and let the wind blow away the, the outer coverings. I'll talk more about grass seed in a minute here. OK. Here's another extremely common plant. It's not native. It was introduced by Europeans, but it's still edible. This is the common plantain. And you can use the young leaves. And most, most greens, you're going to want to go for the young leaves because they have less of the fiber, they have uh, uh, less cellulose. Plants have cellulose as a kind of protector for their cell walls, and you can't digest it. But like, um, horses, cows, deer, bears, they can digest it because they have either double stomachs or they have special bacteria that will help break down the cellulose into sugar, but we can't do that. But try to go for the young leaves and greens if you can. But the, the greens are edible. You can also, when they're dry and they become brown, you can pull the seeds off in your hand and just rub them. And the seeds are extremely tiny, so this isn't one I'd really focus on. But you can see these tiny red or brown seeds and add those to your bread if you would like to. Isn't that psyllium? When it's the seed, it's the psyllium seed, right? You can eat the, the seeds from many different kinds of plantains, but this is just the common plant. We do have a, another native plantain. And the flowers, it's going to be a shorter plant, and the flowers are going to have kind of a clearish petal to them. What did you call it? Plantain. Plantain. Yeah. Is that the kind you can use uh, if you get poison ivy, you can put it yep. on? Yeah, you can also crush the leaves and, and put them on bee stings, ferns, or poison ivy. It has poison Now here's an example of a plant that is both edible and toxic. This one, the scientific name is Oxalis. It's a common name wood sorrel. If you um, bite it, it's got a very uh, kind of a tart, sour flavor. And that flavor is due to the presence of oxalic acid. In small quantities, let's say just as a garnish for your, for your salad, or as a uh, part of your salad, or just a good handful of these, it's not going to be a big problem. But if you consume, consume too much oxalic acid, which by the way is also present in various forms in prickly pear pads, and uh, a curly dock, which I've got down here, it can inhibit the absorption of calcium. In a long run, it will make your bones weaker. So this is good for you in small quantities, just don't eat too much of it. And again, try to get the younger leaves. Um, pods are pretty good too, and they'll give you a lot of vitamins.
Here we got the prickly pear. The prickly pear is one of those plants that's common enough, and you can get enough of them to make them one of those major plants that you want to look for. And virtually all the plant is edible. However, the larger pads contain those calcium oxalate crystals, so you want to avoid them. I don't know if you've ever eaten a mature prickly pear pad before, but it's like kind of biting into a, a handful of sand. One time I had cooked up several, like many years ago, I cooked up some mature prickly pear pads, put them in a tortilla, and thought I was going to have a nice taco. <laughs> But it bit into it was like biting into a handful of sand. It was really awful. So try to go for these ones. These ones in Spanish are called nopalitos. Nopal is the Spanish word for prickly pear. And nopalitos means a little prickly pear. And they're very flexible, as you can see. Bend the pad back and forth. And instead of the big spines, it's got these little green things on here. These little green protrusions. So look for those. And those are the ones you want to harvest about this size, maybe about to this big. And uh, you can eat them raw or you can slice them up kind of like green beans and boil them. Uh, one thing some people may not like about them is they're very, very slimy. They got like a, a lot of mucus looking stuff in them. Uh, it doesn't affect the edibility of them though, they're still very good. So how do you get the like tiny little hairy thing about them? The tiny things, which are also spines called blockheads, there are several ways you can get rid of them. One is you can just put it by fire. Fire will burn them off. You can also get a sharp knife and scrape off the outer part. Mm -hmm. Or one way I like to do is get a pebble, like a rounded pebble, you just rub it on there, and they'll just fall off. You just mm -hmm. blow them off after they've popped out of their little, their little holes. Have you ever stir-fried them? I have not done that. Really? You can. Stir -fried. To us you just can. recently, and it's the first time I had them. They were good, and they worked slimy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I had them in eggs, and they're not as slimy then as well. And also, I one of the ways my great aunts would cook them is mix them with vinegar, a little bit of vinegar, and that helps take out some of the slime if you don't like the slime. Mm -hmm. Also on the prickly pear pad, you're going to have edible flowers. This one is a kind of an orange or yellow flower. It closed up. It was open yesterday, but closed up. Sorry, guys. It's a pretty big flower, like this big. It's kind of like a rose. Uh, you can eat the flower like the cabbage, like the yucca flower. And actually, it's better than the yucca flower. You can just eat it plain raw and it tastes great. No bitter flavor at all. And also, from like late July, maybe August, September, depending on where you live, uh, these will become ripe and they'll swell to about this big. This is the actual fruit of the prickly pear, the pear. And uh, it's called tunas in Spanish. Uh, it's great fruit. Again, mostly water. If you dry them out, you'll see just how much water they have. They'll shrink into a tiny little thing about this big. So you can understand why they don't have that many calories. But you can also crush the seeds. In uh, Mexico, they make a kind of cheese-like substance out of queso de tuna by crushing the seeds. <laughs> how do you eat the pear? The pear? And it also has the glockids again. So be careful about spiking yourself when you pick them. You can just rub those things off, or you can skin them, or you can just cut them in half and scoop out the, the uh, pulp inside and eat it whole. Well, as soon as you get the spines off, you can really eat it whole, though. It's just the skin's going to have a lot of fiber. The, like, purple. Yes, <laughs> they're going to turn purple when they're ready. And there's a lot of other edible cactus fruits in Texas, but the majority of them occur out in West Texas. And we've got horse crippler, um, things like, like a strawberry cactuses, and their fruits are much, much sweeter than anything we've got here. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's another important green. If you want to add these to your smoothies, it would probably be spectacular. Oops. Oops. This is Greenbrier. Now, the majority of the year is going to be a very woody, tough vine. You don't want to hear it snap. Is that the same plant as Smilax? Yes, Smilax is the scientific name. Um, when it first comes up in the spring, it's going to look kind of like a small asparagus. And it's going to be extremely flexible like that nopalito. You're going to be able to bend it back and forth very easily. You're going to be able to easily break it off. It will make a snapping sound. And it will be very, very tender. And thick, too. This is a, really, a fairly thin vine, but it's going to be thick. You can even eat the, the leaves. They're kind of a shiny a green color. They're not like this. The leaves are different. And they have these little curlies coming off. And you can eat that whole section. The stem, the leaf, the little tendrils. What time of the year are they available? They are out right now. This is kind of the end towards their season. Either that or they're going to be way up in the trees. And as soon as they come up, though, everything is going to go for them. Deer are going to try to get them. Yeah, like like yeah, the yucca shoots, deer are going to really go for those, too. So if you can get them early, that's good. Um, kind of April, May, maybe late March. This will be one of the first plants of the year, though, you're going to be able to, to harvest. Another plant you'll see. What are the nutrients on that tree? 
Nutrients, I, I'm not sure, but probably, I mean, you can actually taste a kind of protein flavor. So this is probably one of the few greens you're going to actually be able to get protein from. And you're going to probably have a, a little bit of carbohydrates. No fat, though. I've heard that and vitamins, lots of vitamins. I've heard that people have survived on Smilax. Just on Smilax, yeah. you know. Still, you would have to eat large quantities.